All right, welcome back to Tales in a Trench Coat. I'm Midhearts 3, and today we are back in Dragon Age Inquisition. Last time we went, uh, like, did a walking trail around Haven. We met our companions that were outside. We um, traveled, we picked up some notes and papers, and talked about resource gathering, fought some Druffalo. And then we got to actually convene with the war table and our commanders um, of different sections of our army group. Sure, group. And yeah. So today we're going to be meeting the rest of our crew. We met Liliana, Josephine, and Cullen again um, in the war table room. And we'll be going back in there so we can look at some stuff. But we're going to be talking to them, kind of get some insight on what's going on with them. Kind of like get a feel for like who they are as people. But they seem pretty cool. So yeah, um, out here before... I think she just sits out here. Okay. Well, she doesn't have anything over her head yet. Oh, wait. Oh, no. She has a... Yes. She just I looks like her. Well. Never mind. That's not her. Anyway, I thought that was Maneve, but she has a similar character model, but not totally... Not too similar. But on the bed in this room to the, um, the right, facing the war room coming from the front of the chantry, is a codex entry about the maker there was no word for heaven or for earth for sea or sky all that existed was silence then the voice of the maker rang out the first word and his word became all that might be dream idea hope and a fear endless possibilities and from it made his firstborn and he said to them in my image i forge you to you i am dominion over all that exists by your will may all things be done. Then in the center of heaven, he called forth a city with towers of gold, streets with music for cobblestones, and banners which flew without wind. There he dwelled, waiting to see the wonders his children would create. The children of the Maker gathered before his golden throne and sang hymns of praise unending, but their songs were the songs of the cobblestones. They shone with the golden light, reflected from the Maker's throne. They held forth the banners that flew on their own. And the voice of the Maker shook the fade, saying, In my image I have wrought my firstborn. You have been given dominion over all that exists. By your will all things are done, yet you do nothing. The realm I have given you is formless, ever-changing. He knew he had wrought amiss. So the Maker turned from his firstborn, and took from the faith a measure of its living flesh, and placed it apart from the spirits, and spoke to it, saying, Here I decree opposition in all things, for earth, sky, for winter, summer, for darkness, light. By my will alone is balance sundered, and the world given new life, and no longer was it formless, ever changing, but held fast, immutable. With words for heaven and for earth, sea and sky, at last did the Maker from the living world make men, immutable, as the substance of earth, with souls made of dreams and idea, hope and fear, endless possibilities. Then the Maker said, To you, my second born, I grant this gift, in your heart shall burn an unquenchable flame all-consuming and never satisfied. From the fade I crafted you, and to the fade you shall return, each night in dreams, that you may always remember me. And then the Maker sealed the gates of the Golden City. There he dwelled, waiting to see the wonders his children would create. Canticle of Theranodes 5, 1, 8. I don't know Theranodes. Theranodes. Is that how it's pronounced? I'm not sure. But this is like Tale Tale, Chant of Light, like the beginning, the Genesis. This is telling of before the first sin. Alright, so we'll go to the other side. This door ordained with. Oh no, they're basically the same. Alright, so we'll go over here. See what's going on. The Inquisition cannot remain, Ambassador, if she can't prove it was founded on Justinia's orders. 
This is an inopportune time, Marquis. More of the faithful flock here each day. But allow me to introduce you to the brave soul who risked her life to slow the magic of the bridge. Mistress Lavelan, this is the Marquis Durelion, one of Divine Justinia's greatest supporters. And the rightful owner of Haven. House Durelion lent Justinia these lands for pilgrimage. This inquisition is not a beneficiary of this arrangement. This is the first I've heard of Haven having an owner outside the Chantry. My wife, Lady Machin of Denham, has claimed to Haven by ancient treaty with the monarchs of Ferelden. We were honored to lend this use to Divine Justinia. She is a... She was a woman of supreme merit. I will not let an upstart order remain on her holy ground. People have been injured. You can't just turn them out onto the snow. And who benefits if they stay? Divine Justinia, Marquis. The Inquisition, not the Chantry, is sheltering the pilgrims who mourn her. Why is the Chantry ignoring the faithful? Because it remains in shock. <sighs> we face a dark time, Your Grace. Divine Justinia would not want her passing to divide us. She would, in fact, trust us to forge new alliances to the benefit of all, no matter how strange they might seem. I'll think on it, Lady Montillier. The Inquisition might stay in the meanwhile. Do the Durellians actually have a claim on this place? His Grace's position is not so strong as he presents it. Despite their Ferelden relations, the Durellions are Orlesian. If the Marquis wishes to claim Haven, Empress Selene must negotiate with the Ferelden on his behalf. Her current concerns are a bit larger than minor property disputes. I apologize for the intrusion. I didn't realize you were meeting with the Marquis. You did little harm. In truth, the debate was most beneficial as practice for those to come. You expect more people in Haven? Undoubtedly. And each visitor will spread the story of the Inquisition after they depart. An ambassador should ensure the tale is as complimentary as possible. May I ask what brought you to work for the Inquisition? Sister Leliana approached me. We've been acquainted for quite some time. For better or worse, being the Inquisition's diplomat has become as interesting as she promised. What sort of dealings have you had with nobility? For some years, I was the royally appointed court ambassador from Antiva to Orle. The nobility of Thedas is a rather singular sphere. Those I'm not acquainted with, I know through reputation. The Inquisition is lucky to have you as an advocate, Lady Montelier. Thank you. Let us hope so. Thedas's politics have become agitated as of late. I hope to guide us down smoother paths. But please excuse me. I've much work to do before the day is done. Okay. And we get introduced. Oh, goodness gracious, she just popped in. Heavens. We get introduced to Lady Montelier. Lady Josephine Montelier. She will be our ambassador. Um, well, she is our ambassador of the Inquisition. Um, an interesting lady. Um,. And great. Uh, next to her is a book that we can read, um, The Children of Andraste. What became of Ival and her descendants is largely unknown for one primary reason. She had only daughters. Each of those daughters only had daughters. They married into other families and took other names, and in the chaos of the Second Blight, all traces of survivors were lost. Andraste's true bloodline, if it exists, lies solely in the descendants of Vival. And the suspicion of my order is that it produces only daughters. Thus, the claim of your young man, Monsieur, are suspect. From a letter by Sister Ganea of the Augustine Order, Dragon 912. Hmm, okay. Anyway, while we're here, we can talk to Maneve. We didn't get to talk to her, because she's in here. You're the Herald. Or, well, the one they're calling the Herald, anyway. It's odd to see them accepting a mage as their hero. 
especially a Dalish elf. One look at your face and it's clear you were never part of a circle. My name is Maneve. I research demons and other creatures. Seeker, Pentagast and I use what I find to help the soldiers fight them. You said you were a mage? No, just an apprentice. Circle mages must prove themselves in a ritual called the Harrowing. I was never very good at magic. I've got just enough talent to be a danger to other people. But when the mages rebelled, people like me had nowhere to go. The Templars would have killed us. Luckily, Seeker Pentagast took me in, along with the Tranquil I was protecting. I'm surprised that even an apprentice mage wouldn't join the rebellion. I don't like using magic to fight. I'm not good at it either. I liked studying. I liked performing rituals that helped us unlock the secrets of the Veil. I liked having the Templars around to keep us safe. Sometimes you'll get an option to choose, like, your personal background. And sometimes it gives, like, really interesting dialogue and everything. So it's, in my opinion, it's good to explore the other dialogue trees that you get besides the ones that are, like, just there for you to take. So obviously, I'm going to... For better, for good or ill, I'm going to choose the top option. You might have done well among the Dalish. Our mages are encouraged to study safely. Fenner will take the Dalish. Don't let my lack of Valestine fool you, Lethli. I was a proud member of my clan until my magic manifested. You know what happens when they have too many mages. They gave me a pack and sent me into the woods to find my own life. I was seven years old. I'm so sorry. I stumbled into a village, starving and cold, a few weeks later. I started using magic to scare predators away. The villagers saw me make fire in my fist. They were terrified and wanted to kill me. Templars saved me from them. They gave me food and clothes and took me to the circle. I've seen what life is like without the Templars, and I want no part of it. I just want to study. You said that you were keeping some of the Tranquil safe? Yes. The mages took some of them when my circle rebelled. The rest were forgotten. Most circle mages look down on the Tranquil, or try to pretend they don't exist. They don't have any emotions. They can barely take care of themselves, can't defend themselves at all. It's a shame. I like them better than most people. I'm glad they have someone who cares about them. They deserve better. They're polite, they're rational, and they'll never get angry at you. When they study, they have a focus no normal person could ever match. But the Templars, even some of the mages, mistreated them just because they could. The Tranquil never fought back. If not for that, I... I don't know. Doesn't really matter now. You say Cassandra has you researching creatures? Yes. If you find anything interesting in your travels, I'd appreciate you bringing it to me. I may be able to find some weakness our soldiers can exploit when fighting various creatures. At the least, some materials are useful for making potions or gear for the Inquisition. Why did you decide to research dangerous creatures? I like the outdoors. The idea of the outdoors, anyway. When some monster is coming at you, glowing eyes and burning claws, it's terrifying. But once you know how it works, you can deal with it. It's just another part of the world. So much of this world is only frightening because we don't understand it. I found something the demons left behind. Can you use it? Yes, that's very helpful. Just leave it there and the Tranquil and I will examine it. Okay, when she says leave it there, we can turn in research at this table. That'll help. So I turned in one dream rags. <laughs> and sometimes, yeah, and shadow essence. And that'll give different bonuses and be helpful in fighting creatures. Okay, there is this door right here. Look around, there's nothing in this entry. <laughs> Sorry, I need to do that every time I walk by. Okay, there's a few things to read, but there's a pot right next to the book on the left with a belt of spirit resistance, which grants a 7% um, spirit resistance to us or whoever wears it. You can read, Founding the Chantry. Okay, Cordelia Draken, 
King of the city-state of Orlais was a man of uncommon ambition. In the year negative 15 ancient, the young king began construction of a great temple dedicated to the maker, and declared that by its completion, he would not only have united the warring city-states of the south, he would have brought Andrastian belief to the world. In negative three ancient, the temple was completed. There, in its heart, Draken knelt before the eternal flame of Andraste and was crowned ruler of the empire of Orlais. His first act as emperor, to declare the chantry as the established Andrastian religion of the empire. It took three years and several hundred votes, but Olesa of Montsimerad okay, Mont was elected to lead the new chantry. Upon her coronation as divine, she took the name Justinia, in honor of the disciple who recorded Andraste's songs. In that moment, the ancient era ended and the divine age began. From the... Fr from Ferelden Folklore and History by Sister Petrine, Chantry Scholar. So this takes into note, I think it's every 100 years. Every 100 years, a new age is brought to fruition. And something from the previous age helps in the naming of the next age. Dragon Age was named the Dragon Age because a dragon was flying overhead. This is just me spark noting it. it. I think it was supposed to become the Sun Age. The naming of the ages are really interesting. I think the Steel Age was because the Queen of Antiva was found with four steel swords, like, in her, in the woods somewhere after, like, when she was assassinated. So the following age was called the Steel Age. Really crazy stuff. So, yeah. So, on the other side, on the on the right, we can find an entry called Chantry Hierarchy. The Divine is the titular head of the Chantry. Although since the schism split the Imperial Chantry into its own faction, there are now in fact two Divines at any one time. One Divine, informally called the White Divine, is a woman housed in the Grand Cathedral in Val Royo. The other, known as the Black Divine, is a man housed in the Argent Spire in Menrathos. Neither Divine recognizes the existence of the other and the informal names are considered sacrilegious. No matter the gender, a divine is addressed as most holy, or your perfection. Beneath the rank of divine is the grand cleric. Each grand cleric presides over numerous chantries and represents the highest religious authority for their region. They travel to Val Royo when the College of Clerics convenes, but otherwise remain where they are assigned. All grand clerics are addressed as your grace. Beneath the grand cleric is the mother, or in the imperial chantry, the father. If a mother is in charge of a particular chantry, revered is appended on her title. These are the priests responsible for administering to the spiritual well-being of their flock. A mother or revered mother is addressed as your reverence. Brothers and sisters form the rank and file of the Chantry and consist of three main groups, Affirmed, Initiate, and Clerics. Affirmed are the lay brethren of the Chantry, those regular flock who have turned to the Chantry for succor. Often they are people who have led a difficult or irreligious life and have chosen to go into seclusion, or even orphans and similar unfortunates who were raised into the Chantry life. The affirmed take care of the chantry and, in turn, afforded a life of quiet contemplation, no questions asked. Only those folk who take vows become initiates. There are men and women in training, whether in academics knowledge or the martial skills of a warrior. All initiates receive an academic education, although only those who seek to become Templars learn how to fight in addition. Clerics are the true academics of the chantry. Those men and women who have dedicated themselves to the pursuit of knowledge. They are often found in the Chantry archives, sages presiding over libraries or books and arcane knowledge. The most senior of these clerics, placed in charge of such archives, are given the title Elder, although such a rank is still beneath that of the mother. All other brothers and sisters are addressed simply by noting their title before their name, such as Brother Genitivi. 
for a guide for ambassadors from Ravane. So we can look around. There is a locked door. We can't open it. I'm not a rogue. I don't even know if I can, like, switch and be... I don't know if I can switch and be, um, Varric. So that door is going to remain locked, unfortunately. We can walk all the way down here and find the cell that we were in. This is the room we were in in the beginning. And unfortunately, we we can't open the door. That looks like a chest back there, but it's not telling me that that's a thing. But in the far corner of the room, on the right, in the back, uh, there's an army dirk. We can either keep it or sell it. Whichever. But yeah, this is where we were. Alright, so, making our way back to the front of the Chantry. Before leaving, there is a book on a desk called The Fade. It's on the right-hand side, going back towards the door. The study of the Fade is as old as humankind. For so long as men have dreamed, we have walked its twisting paths, sometimes catching a glimpse of a city at its heart. Always as close as our own thoughts, but impossibly separated from our world. The Zaventer Imperium once spent vast fortunes of gold, lyrium, and human slaves in an effort to map the terrain of the Fade, an ultimately futile endeavor. Although portions of it belong to powerful spirits, all of the Fade is in constant flux. The Imperium succeeded in finding the disparate and ever-shifting realms of the dozen demon lords, as well as cataloging a few hundred types of spirits before they were forced to abandon the project. The relationship of dreamers to the Fade is complex. Even when entering the Fade through the use of lyrium, mortals are not able to control or affect it. The spirits who dwell there, however, can. And as the Chantry teaches us, the great flaw of the spirits is that they have neither imagination nor ambition. They create what they see through their sleeping visitors, building elaborate copies of our cities, people, and events which, like the reflections in a mirror, ultimately lack context or life in their own. Even the most powerful demons merely plagiarize the worst thoughts and fears of mortals and build their realms in no other ambition than to taste life. From Tranquility and the Role of the Fade in Human Culture by First Enchanter Josephus? Josephus. Alright, Josephus. Interesting. I like Dragon Age Inquisition because it gives us more- it, Ooh, in this sack next to the door, we find Summerson. It gives us more context, it gives us more information, and I love information, lore, and context. Alright, walking Seek back out. Yeah, make her forgive anyone who gets in her way. Alright, we're back out in the courtyard. Um, alright, we can finally inspect these requisitions we don't have any but once we hit hinterlands we will have some so we can find Liliana our spy master in her tent blessed are the peacekeepers the champions of the just blessed are the righteous the lights in the shadow in their blood the maker's will is written is that what you want from us blood to die so that your will is done is death your only blessing you speak Fandraste, no? What does the Maker's Prophet have to say about all of this? What's his game? How is this a game? Do you see the sky? What about the temple ruins? The bones lying in the dust? Even if you didn't support the Divine's peace, you wouldn't call this right. Who could? So many innocent lives. The faithful murdered where the holiest of holies once stood. If the Maker willed this, what is it if not a game or a cruel joke? I speak for no one but myself, and I have no answers for you. You probably don't even worship the Maker. Lucky. He asks a lot. The Chantry teaches that the Maker abandoned us. He demands repentance for our sins. He demands it all. Our lives, our deaths. Justinia gave him everything she had, and he let her die. I'm sorry. Her death has clearly hit you hard. Not just me. All of us. 
She was the divine. She led the faithful. She was the heart. If the Maker doesn't intervene to save the best of his servants, what good is he? I used to believe I was chosen, just as some say you are. I thought I was fulfilling his purpose for me, working with the Divine, helping people. But now she's dead. It was all for nothing. Serving the Maker meant nothing. Now, I'm not really the best person to talk to. Doesn't the Chantry have people for this? <laughs> so I should let a priest comfort me? No, this is my burden. I regret that I even let you see me like this. It was a moment of weakness. It won't happen again. Come, to work then. We will speak later. So it's true. Butler has stunned on us. I hope my hunch was wrong. Hmm? You knew him well? Not as well as I thought. Show me the reports. Oh, this was interesting. There were so many questions surrounding Faria's death. Did he think we wouldn't notice? He killed Faria, one of my best agents, and knows where the others are. You know what must be done. Make it clean. Painless if you can. We were friends once. Okay, so it doesn't seem like it, but this, spoiler, will have an effect on Liliana's story going forth. Just like in Dragon Age Origins, you have a chance to either harden someone or soften someone. At this point, Liliana has been through so much. So, so much. And then with the death of the Divine, obviously, I'm pretty sure she's hardened. So we have a chance to kind of ease that in order to bring about an outcome later on in the story. It's just crucial to pick the kind of dialogue. So if we do nothing, then we don't interfere at all. If we s say, do you have to kill him? We stop Liliana from killing the traitor. And if we say traitors deserve to die, we encourage Liliana to kill the traitor agent. Obviously, it seems like having her kill the agent would mean she follows the path that she's on, keeping her hardened, but we can soften her by saying, do you have to kill him? Wait, what are you doing? He betrayed us. He murdered my agent. And you'd kill him, just like that? You find fault with my decision? We can't solve our problems with murder. And what would you suggest? Leave him be. Butler's betrayal put our agents in danger. I condemned one man to save dozens. I may not like what I do, but it must be done. I cannot afford the luxury of ideals at a time like this. Now is precisely the time for ideals. You feel very strongly about this. <sighs> very well. I will think of another way to deal with this man. Apriyan Butler, but see that he lives. Now if you're happy, I have more work to do. And that is literally that. Take our little walk around haven. Okay, in a sack next to the tavern, we find 52 gold, lamb's wool, three serpent stone, and three deep soccer hides. I forgot to hit the nug. That sounds like a dance or something. But I forgot to commune with it. I forgot to talk to it. I forgot to loop it on its little forehead and ask it to give me my schematics back so we don't have any schematics for right now but that's okay we can walk to find the training grounds and finally speak to commander color you there there's a shield in your hand block with it if this man were your enemy you'd be dead lieutenant don't hold back the recruits must prepare for a real fight not a practice one yes commander We've received a number of recruits, locals from Haven and some pilgrims. None made quite the entrance you did. At least I got everyone's attention. That you did. I was recruited to the Inquisition in Kirkwall myself. I was there during the Mage Uprising. I saw firsthand the devastation it caused. Sir. Cassandra sought a solution. When she offered me a position, I left the Templars to join her cause. 
Now it seems we face something far worse. I must have this mark for a reason. It will work, I'm sure of it. Provided we can secure aid, but I'm confident we can. The Chantry lost control of both Templars and Mages. Now they argue over a new divine while the breach remains. The Inquisition could act when the Chantry cannot. Our followers would be part of that. There's so much we can... Forgive me. I doubt you came here for a lecture. So as we can see, Colin is also someone that we can romance. And, you know, I feel like I'm not entirely settled yet. So, I mean, why not? It's there. No, but if you have one prepared, I'd love to hear it. <laughs> Another time, perhaps. I, uh... <clears throat> There's still a lot of work ahead. Commander, Sir Ryden has a report on our supply lines. As I was saying. So it seems that Cullen was recruited right after the Mage Templar uprising. Uh, I mean, rebellion, uh, war kicking off, and... That really just makes my brain go mm, with the timeline, but I mean, eh, there's no arguing with it. But yes, that is the same Cullen that has, that was in Kirkwall, and saw Meredith turn into a giant stone, red lyrium stone thing. But yeah. So while we're out here, we can find Cassandra. Okay, so I will say, Cassandra is also romanceable, but unfortunately, as um, a woman, I can't romance her, unfortunately. She um, doesn't like women, and that's okay, but we can still flirt with her when we get the chance. So I'm going to take that chance. You're kind of a force of nature, aren't you? When I need to be. It's impressive. You flatter me. I'm trying. Did I do the right thing? <laughs> what I have set in motion here could destroy everything I have revered my whole life. One day they may write about me as a traitor, a madwoman, a fool, and they may be right. What does your faith tell you? <laughs> I believe you are innocent. I believe more is going on here than we can see. And I believe no one else cares to do anything about it. They will stand in the fire and complain that it is hot. <laughs> but is this the Maker's will? I can only guess. What's going to happen now? Now, we deal with the Chantry's panic over you before they do even more harm. <laughs> then we close the breach. We are the only ones who can. <laughs> After that, we find out who is responsible for this chaos and we end them. And if there are consequences to be paid for what I have done, I pay them. I only pray the price is not too high. You didn't have any choice. Didn't I? My train is always said. Cassandra, you are too brash. You must think before you act. I see what must be done, and I do it. I see no point in running around in circles like a dog chasing its tail. But I misjudged you in the beginning, did I not? I thought the answer was before me, clear as day. I cannot afford to be so careless again. It wasn't like you had no reason to suspect me. I was determined to have someone answer for what happened. Anyone. You've said you believe you're chosen. Does that mean you believe in the Maker? Okay, so I talked about there's a possibility that a certain dialogue will trap you into being known as a Herald of Andrasse that is faithful. This will come up in a dialogue tree 
hours from now. And it doesn't seem important when you're being offered like these different choices, but later on, it is important when establishing the Inquisition and its mission. And this is one of those instances. I think that plainly just comes from Cassandra. She's literally just being like, uh, uh, she's just like trying to like steer the car. And it's just like, I don't know. I don't even know how to drive a car, Cassandra. What do you mean am I faithful? So yes, these are, these are one of like the dialogue options. We get a special dialogue tree because we're elven. Um, we can say yes, but it will lock you in as being faithful. Unfortunately, there's no way to kind of like have faithful dialogue and then not be, but it just it just depends on anything. It, it, it depends on who you like you personally. But I think for the sake of like the long like run of it, I'll say yes. I believe he exists. You do. I'm surprised, but. I suppose it's comforting. Surely the Maker put us both on this path for a reason. Now it simply remains to see where it leads us. Maybe that was a heat of the moment thing. Who knows, but I guess we'll see. So, we can... What's, what's this thing? I keep hitting the wrong thing. Last map. What is this? Oh, have some armor made. Okay, got it. We'll make some armor. Maybe... Maybe Solus needs something? Do you need anything? What's your armor like right now? You like cotton? Everyone likes cotton. <laughs> and I'm gonna check out the war table. I meant to check it out before I left. In my arms, okay, guys, it's we can go in here and we can summon the war council. Because we can't just look at the table, we have to summon the council. My scouts are posted on the ridges in case there's any trouble. Alright. We don't have anything to do in our lay yet? No, we don't have anything to do in our lay yet, so we'll be sticking to Ferelden specifically. I will say, there are some war table operations that you have to do before the first act ends, or they'll just disappear. Um, every war table operation in and of its own self is useful. They give items, they give experience. Um, upgrades, they're useful to do. Um, they can switch a story beat, they come from different story beats, so it's just, it's a nice addition. It, it's tedious, is what I'm gonna say, because of the simple fact that it delves in real time, everything gets done in real time. When you're playing on your own and you're just doing it, like, it's fine, because, you know, you're just gonna do it, and then you're gonna go to sleep, and then the next thing you're gonna wake up, and your war table operations are done. But not so much for things like this. So we have our war table operations, like Contact Clan Lavellian, which is where we're from. We're Lavellian. Um, Hard and High Town, Varric's Revenge. <laughs> uh, we did the Black Emporium. Scout the Storm Coast, but we need four power in order to do it. Um, the Terran of High Ever. Address the Nobleman's Concern. Gather coin and rescue soldiers missing in Ferelden. So gather coin is pretty simple. If we need more money, we can have someone do it. They all have their different times. They all have their different text. So sometimes in a situation, there will be someone that is more suitable with getting certain things done. It'll be a less time in order for them to gather said coin. Sometimes the person that hat takes less time won't be the one that gives you more items but it's it's like a risk sort of thing it's not all the time but you know it's just something you should keep your eye out for so addressing a noble's concerns addressing a nobleman's concerns herald your inquisition says it's for order against chaos reason and darkness if you stand by this come forth and derive the heretics from my lands they claim to be refugees but i have seen elves and apostates among them filthy savages tearing at our roots and our monarch refuses to send forth armies my own knights were decimated at the conclave i require your aid to return peace to my lands prove your loyalty and i will see you richly rewarded for your faith praise the light lord kildaren of Ferelden. 
So, like I said, depending on who you pick, we'll have different different things. So, Josephine says, Ah, yes, Lord Kildren, uh, a pariah even among his peers, let us send a polite refusal and nothing more. Liliana, we can take advantage of his raving. My spies can harass the refugees into moving somewhere else to win Kildren's favor. And then Cullen says, we could send a few patrols, but I would prefer they help the refugees and not this Lord Kildren. So, as I said, you can kind of, like, gauge what's going to happen. Obviously, if you go with Josephine, she's not, like, it's going to be nothing. It also takes 20 minutes for each. Um, she's, you get nothing as a reward. You get some money with Liliana, and you get influence with Cullen. Um... Influence is nice. I like influence. Money is also nice, but we're going to be out and about and kind of getting things and then selling old things. So I'm just going to go with Cullen. To work. And with that, he can't be used for any other war table operation. This is where he is. He is stuck here for 19 minutes and 50 seconds and counting. I will say not all of your war table operations will just go away. Some of them can be done after the first act, but some of them have to be done before the first act ends. So, to whom it concerns, the Tairnir of High Ever wishes to convey our deepest sympathies in the death of Divine Justinia V. The Most Holy was incomparable in her wisdom and dedicated to peace, and we had high hopes that her conclave would succeed. We will hold a vigil in High Ever in remembrance of Justinia and cordially invite the Inquisition to attend. Sincerely, Taryn Fergus Cuslin. So this is the brother from Dragon Age Origins. This is her older brother. He's, it's ten years later. He's still in High, he's still the Taryn of High Ever. And he's holding a vigil. Well, she said she'd write a letter, so we'll have Liliana do it. I'm not going to put this much thought later on. It's just going to be a thunk a thunk a thunk getting things done and for the last one we'll do hard and high town three barracks revenge ruffles i need a favor actually let's call it a loan since i'll pay it back i got a letter from my editor in kirkwall today she tells me that a hard and high town three the repunching appeared in print from an antiven printer a couple weeks ago i'll give you a moment to contemplate the horror that is that title had my contacts in the Merchants Guild look for an author a couple years back, the best they could find out after spending a couple hundred gold was that Pyral Palinforth is a pen name. I could have told them that for free. You've got contacts with the Antiven print houses. Maybe you can find out more than the guild. Varric. So we can just send Josephine. She says she could ask a friend. So Let us begin. That's 15 minutes. All right, and our people are set. And we are free to go. And we'll have to wait for those to get back to us. But, yeah. Okay. Can I just leave? Can I... I'm gonna save. Can I just go? World map. Okay, so we are being tasked to go with the, to the Hinterlands. We can go to the Black Emporium, because that's also a place that we have unlocked. But we'll go to the Hinterlands. Um and allocate our party. The one thing I really love about Dragon Age Inquisition is that they have the tarot cards and everyone has these sort of cool cards that just, oh, you, I love them. They change throughout the story. They're so great. So it has at the bottom what class they are at the top, their name, but we only have this many people so we can take with this many people. of Andraste. I've heard the stories. Everyone has. We know what you did at the breach. It's odd for a Dalish elf to care what happens to anyone else, but you'll get no backtalk here. That's a promise. Inquisition Scout Harding at your service. I, well, all of us here, will do whatever we can to help. <laughs> Harding, huh? Ever been to Kirkwall's High Town? I can't say I have. Why? You'd be Harding and I... No, <laughs> never mind. Ugh. It's a pleasure to make your acquaintance. We should get to business. The situation's pretty dire. We came to secure horses from Redcliffe's old horsemaster. I grew up here. 
And people always said that Dennett's herds were the strongest and the fastest this side of the Frostbacks. But with the Mage Templar fighting getting worse, we couldn't get to Dennett. Maker only knows if he's even still alive. Mother Giselle's at the crossroads helping refugees and the wounded. Our latest reports say that the war's spread there, too. Corporal Vale and our men are doing what they can to help protect the people, but they won't be able to hold out very long. You best get going. No time to lose. So as we continue finding areas, we'll keep being able to talk to Lace Harding, um, Scout Harding. So, yeah. Uh, we get a plethora of quests, so let's go to our journal. So, in the Inquisition's Pass is the threat that remains. We need to clear the threats at the crossroads. No mutt, no biggie. Um, we have information and quests for different places that we haven't even been yet. So, information for the Hinterlands. Uh, nestled in the heart of Ferelden are the old forests and farmsteads of the Hinterlands. This rocky, rolling gateway to Redcliffe has now fallen into chaos. The conflict between mages and Templars forced many off their land. Demons stalk the hills, and reports of strange magic found near Redcliffe. So, Hinterlands, we have a uh, Master of Horses, so we're being charged with finding Master Dennett, and asking him or convincing him to let us or provide us with horses so we need to speak to him we need to find him and speak to him there are rifts that we will need to close just like the ones that we did on the way to the temple of sacred ashes so we just need to be on the lookout for those and then we need to um deal with holding the hinterlands there are six camps in total we have one so we just need to be on the lookout as we're going finding these camps and this should give you a good kind of like scope of how big this area probably is. Five camps is a lot of camps. And that's just basically what is for the other areas. I won't dive into the Fallowmire, the Fallowmire and the Storm Coast because we haven't been there yet. We haven't even got any information on it, so we won't really have to worry about it. Uh, in our journal, we can also find collections. At the moment, it's just songs. We have three of the 21, and then what is our completed quests? Oh, we should do our level ups. So we'll do our level ups. Okay, I have level up. I leveled up my party. Um, we can. There's little things here, so we can inspect requisitions. We still haven't gotten any. We can change our party at this war horn. We can equip potions at camp. Um, I find that regeneration potions are really good because the healing potions are everyone. That's the that's the pool that you have. You only have eight healing potions to spread between your group. If someone's constantly taking damage and you haven't put in your behaviors to like have them take a certain amount of damage before drinking, they will just run through your potions. It's always good to have the regeneration potions because at least it's per person. I don't know why they did it like that, but like everyone ha will have their own personal five regeneration potions. So, so I'll have it like that. We have the elf fruit for right now for it. Yeah. So everyone has regeneration potions. But yeah, mixing potions done. Okay, we can come back to the place, we can rest if we need to. But yeah, everyone's kind of just chilling right now. There's an explanation point. I'm thinking, is that who I think it is? Why is she all the way over here? It is who I think it is. This is the requisition this officer. You, She'll keep saying that to you. I'm going to tell you right now, she's the reason that most conversation bugs happen. I'm telling you. I don't have time. Yes, sir. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. Uh, I do you, have time. Sir. What Report. is it? Could prove useful, sir. Okay, she says it could prove useful. So, the Hinterlands is always an interesting one because the requisitions are a bit strange, and I wish they arrived in a different order. If you want to complete all the requisitions for the hinterlands oh probably gonna have to play um for the hinterlands i say try and go through the enemies as slow as possible once you conclude the situation that's happening before you like get to a certain point in the story i know that's very vague but you'll you'll know it when you know it 
there's just no way to go about it. You won't be able to complete certain requisitions because you won't be getting those certain items. So this is the hinterlands, the outskirts of um, Red Cliff. We can look at our map. We have a massive fog of war. It will at least show where the camps are. So you can waypoint to it if you want to. You can just be like, hey, I want a waypoint there. But we're not worried about that right now. It's the same thing with rifts, but not really worried about that right now. Uh, we can clear the threats at the crossing, which is just down the road. There's a question mark, but we'll get to that. We'll at least for right now get to the crossroads. Okay. Some enemies. We can see a rift over there. It's very pretty. Very, very pretty. Ooh, 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 ooh. Best not to go hurling yourself off of heights if you can help it. We can take the path down. Explanation points are just places that have quests, so we can just go visit them. The question marks are places of interest that we can go visit. But as I said, right now, I'm gonna take my I'm gonna walk my little uh, self. Mother Giselle ought to be around here somewhere. He says. Walk, there's some iron. We can pick it up. I think I'll do my ooh resource gathering by myself. There is a lot of uh, dead people killed by bows. Okay, so these are probably people that were killed by Harding. These people, ooh, man, it's a terrible sight, really. Oh, Inquisition forces. They're trying to protect the refugees. Looks like they could use a hand. We are not apostates. I do not think they care, Seeker. Alright, we can help our forces. Uh, I am gonna loot this because I don't know if this stuff disappears. We can find weapon fragments and the Ferelden lock that we need. Also, Liliana is ready. <laughs> She's ready to turn in her stuff. We are not Templars. We mean you no harm. Doesn't look like they're listening. Not even a challenge. All right, chill Be out. ready. More coming our way. Let's see him. I'm so. I didn't mean to do that. Okay. Josephine is also ready. <laughs> We are victorious once more. No, oh crap. Hopefully the items stay on the ground. But we've cleared the area for now. Colin is also ready. <laughs> There are mages here who can heal your wounds. Lie still. Don't... Don't touch me, mother. Their magic is... Turn to noble purpose. Their magic is surely no more evil than your blade. What? Hush, dear boy. Allow them to ease your suffering. Mother Giselle? I am. 
And you must be the one they are calling the Herald of Andraste. I'm told you asked for me. I know of the Chantry's denouncement, and I am familiar with those behind it. I won't lie to you. Some of them are grandstanding, hoping to increase their chances of becoming the new divine. Some are simply terrified. So many good people, senselessly taken from us. What happened was horrible. Fear makes us desperate, but hopefully not beyond reason. Go to them. Convince the remaining clerics you are no demon to be feared. They have heard only frightful tales of you. Give them something else to believe. You want me to appeal to them? If I thought you were incapable, I wouldn't suggest it. Will they even listen? Let me put it this way. You needn't convince them all. You just need some of them to doubt. Their power is the unified voice. Take that from them and you receive the time you need. It's good of you to do this. I honestly don't know if you've been touched by fate or sent to help us, but I hope. Hope is what we need now. The people will listen to your rallying call as they will listen to no other. You could build the Inquisition into a force that will deliver us or destroy us. I will go to Haven and provide Sister Leliana the names of those in the Chantry who will be amenable to a gathering. It is not much, but I will do whatever I can. Corporal Vale is coordinating the Inquisition's efforts in the area. We should speak with him. Okay. Well, we will speak to him in our next episode. Um, we can go around and loot some lamb's wool, some gold, some Ferelda locks, and some gold. That's good. That's good. Uh, is there more? There's, there's a lot of stuff in the area, is what I'm saying. But the good thing is, we have a waypoint, so we can fast travel back to, I think, back to camp, and then back to here. There is, before we leave, there are things like this, and they are landmark spots. So landmarks in the hinterlands, there are 17, and this is talking about the saga of Trida, Bright Axe, Avar Mother. So I was gonna say, I'm not gonna read everything. It would take a very long time for me to read absolutely everything and then get through, especially after doing multiple takes because talking. <laughs> But this is the crossroads um, we can explore and we will explore more of it in our next episode where we try to dissect, divide, and dive into the hinterlands. I keep hitting that button, it's the wrong one. The hinterlands is a sizable area, quite large. <laughs> And we'll take a little bit to get through, so we might not do it all in one episode, might not do it all in one sitting, because it really can't be done in one sitting. You can't really go into an area in one sitting because there are places that are a little too high level for how you are in the beginning, and there are things that get uncovered as you go through the story. So we'll do our best, basically stick to task and then explore how we can, but just play it by ear so yeah um i don't know if i'd said it in any of my other videos but i hope everyone's having a good new year so far it has been hectic to say the least and wild to say in other respects for lack of better words but yeah um I hope you have a good weekend and a good rest of the week so yeah until next time.